worth it. There's only one channel that showcases the best of Chinese and Asian cinema. Drama. Action. Comedy. Romance. Fantasy. And much more. Only on Celestial Movies. Taobin Centers, which operates more than 20 U.S. shopping centers, has been on the lookout for investments in Asia in the past year. The company has set up a unit at Hong Kong and has been looking at markets from China to India. Joining us now in our Singapore studio is Morgan Parker, president of Taobin Asia. Good to have you with us, Morgan. So what are Taobin's plans for the region? Are you seeing opportunities in uh, casino-related retail as well as large mixed-use developments? What is the uh, priority here? Uh, look, Asia is representing one of the most attractive retail real estate development opportunities in the world today, really set against a backdrop of tremendous macroeconomic growth that we're seeing in countries like China and India, but also in places like Japan and Korea. As a retail developer, we're really looking at uh, strong consumption patterns and the growth of communities in these countries, uh, and specifically looking at things like casinos, uh, which traditionally have been a great source of uh, economic development and a great source of consumption. So given the opportunities the region poses, what, what sort of returns are you seeing? I mean, when you compare that with returns that you're seeing in your new developments in the U.S., I understand that the U.S. typically creates a double-digit return on the cost of at least 10 percent. Is that correct? And do you think Asia can actually provide you with better returns than in the U.S.? We, we look at everything on a risk-adjusted basis. It's true that in the United States, new developments that we undertake are typically at a double-digit initial return. Uh, of course, in the United States, as the market matures, there's increasing pressure on investment returns in real estate, and particularly in stable forms of real estate like regional malls, which our company is uh, historically exposed to. Uh, in Asia, of course, the return profiles are wider in markets like India and China, it's not uncommon to see higher returns. Of course, we need to consider those in, in the context of the risks that exist in these jurisdictions. Uh, in Asia, we're looking for returns that are commensurate to or at a premium to the returns that we're able to achieve in the United States. And indeed, we're seeing opportunities in a variety of markets which are compatible with what we're seeing in the United States. Of course, in Asia, the deal flow and the availability of development opportunities is greater simply because these are emerging markets with a much shorter history of shopping center development. So how many projects have you got uh, lined up so far in Asia? And how does that compare with the number of the ongoing projects you've got in the U.S.? I understand you've got some pre-development projects uh, here in uh, Japan, India, South Korea. Absolutely. We've been very fortunate to arrive in Asia you know, in the last couple of years where we've really seen a revolution in the shopping center industry with you know, dozens and dozens of shopping malls being created and in fact in China and India hundreds of shopping malls being created every year. Uh, what we're focused on doing is cultivating a pipeline of opportunities that we can add to our pipeline of opportunities in the United States. Uh, we have roughly half a dozen projects we're particularly focused on across Asia in markets like Japan, South Korea, India and China and that compares favorably to what we're seeing in the U.S. Our objectives in the U.S. have been to create a large-scale super regional shopping center roughly once a year, so really one project a year. And what we're looking at in, in Asia is to supplement that growth we already have in the United States with additional projects every year. Let me pick up on the uh, South Korean and Indian markets. What do you make of the heightened geopolitical risks in the Korean Peninsula as well as the uh, renewed terrorism risks over in India and how those risks are affecting your view of the South Korean and Indian markets? 
Clearly, as a, a business which uh, owns and develops social real estate, we have to be acutely aware of these risks. In South Korea, we think that the, the, the market is absolutely stable. Uh, we don't perceive that there is a threat to consumerism, a threat to the operation of shopping centres in South Korea. Uh, we consult uh, largely with the government and a lot of community groups who provide support for our developments and feel that that market will be robust going forward. In terms of India, uh, I'm guess that it's not a surprise that we've seen the events of the last week. It's a terrible shock and I think that each and every owner of social real estate like shopping centres will need to be vehement in their support and protection of their consumers. And indeed, we see that already in India. I think the standards of shopping centre uh, security in India are probably the highest in Asia, and we would like to see that continue. Now, projects that we're contemplating in India are acutely aware of this risk. Morgan, we have less than a minute. What is your strategy for growth? Is it acquisition, organic, or both? Will you be lining up partners for your retail projects, or are you going to be going on your own? There's, you know, everything we're doing in, in Asia, Kathy, involves partners. It's critically important for a U.S. developer like ourselves to work with the best local partners in each market. In terms of business model, we're looking at acquisition, we're looking at ground-up development, and we're also looking at an important category of rehabilitation of existing assets. Given the large number of shopping centres being created in places like India and China, we really believe that in the years to come, there'll be a fantastic opportunity to take well-located okay. shopping centres that perhaps haven't been as successful and turn them into right. what we consider world-class assets. Morgan, thank you so much for your views. Morgan Parker, President of Taubman Asia in Singapore. Stay with us.